Hey, podcast listeners, wanted to be the first to let you know about the Inside Outside Innovation Summit. The summit will be held May 29th through 31st. Early bird tickets are on sale now and through March 15th, so I encourage you to grab your ticket uh, sooner rather than later because we have an amazing lineup of speakers and an li- amazing lineup of opportunities for folks to innovate together. So let me give you a little bit of background about the summit. This is the second time we're, we're, we've uh, actually hosted this particular event. Last year we had over 600 people, 40 plus speakers, and 68 startups on a sh- startup showcase floor. Uh, we're going to do it even bigger and better this year. So come on out to Lincoln, Nebraska, May 29th through 31st. Let me give you a little bit of information about the summit itself. So the summit will be an opportunity for corporate innovators and startup founders to innovate together, kind of mixing the ties in the t-shirts, the tucked and the untucked into one room and to see what magic happens. We are actively looking for startups to put on the showcase floor. We will be picking probably a top 40 uh, startups from around the world to compete for a $50,000 investment prize, as well as a $25,000 Lincoln launch grant application. So if you go to theiosummit.com, scroll down, any startup can apply to be on the startup showcase floor as well as to apply to be part of the pitch competition or the grant application. We're looking for early stage uh, seeds or uh, post accelerator types of startups in a variety of different vertical markets, whether it's fintech, ag tech, insurance tech, HR, uh, sports tech. Uh, Basically, if you're disrupting your particular uh, niche, we want to see you and we want you to be a part of the part of the show. Welcome to Inside Outside Innovation, episode 91. This show is a small clip from Paul Singh's talk at the IO Innovation Summit last summer. Paul and his partner have traveled around the world, investing in over 1,500 startups. Now he's doing a similar thing here in the U.S. He shared about transforming a city along the way and what else he's learned from living out of a trailer and discovering a new city per week. All right, so the thing I kept thinking about over the last couple of years was um, we invested in all these companies, um, and what we started to find over the course of a couple of years is they started to kind of cluster. They started to cluster, right? And they started to kind of um, hang out with each other. And it turned out that simultaneously, uh, simultaneous to us investing in a lot of companies, there was a sort of rise of co-working spaces all over the world. And so these, these companies that we'd invest in, turned out they didn't need to actually get a, um, a, a lease of their own Instead, they would work at a co-working space. And so, anyway, I got really infatuated with this idea, and um, so I decided to take over a city, which sounds ridiculous, but it just sounds ridiculous. But anyway, so there's this place called Crystal City outside of Washington, D.C. It was locally called Crystal Shitty. Um, and and, and it, for anybody that's ever been in commercial real estate, the, the, one of the, the scary parts of this place is that for about 10 years, it had greater than 50% vacancy. So a lot of crime and bad things would happen there. And it was called Crystal Shitty because nobody went there. That was like, like, I guess if you wanted drugs or something, that's where you would go. But for the most part, there were a bunch of empty federal buildings. And I won't bore you to death with the history of it. But um, So I was like super infatuated with this idea of like, okay, all of our companies everywhere else are clustering. What if we just kind of like tried to plan the city from the center with entrepreneurship at the core? Um, and so I did what any entrepreneur would do. Um, I put my face on it. Of course, the one time I want the damn thing to work. All right, so I had just come back from New York. You can judge me if you want. I had just come back from New York, and I was like, how does Jay-Z get his name or his face on the side of a building? And I was like, fuck that. I'm going to do that too. And so I went back to Crystal City. And so <laughs> so I, um, I put my face on every lamppost in the buildings and everything, and my mom was like, my mom is like the classic Indian tiger mom, and she's like, is this legal? And I was like, well, mom, it really depends on your, um, you know, what you think about white collar and finance, uh, you know, and all that. So anyway, my my mom still is disappointed that I'm not a doctor or lawyer. So there's that. Um, um, All right. So in in two years, Crystal City goes from 50% vacancy to less than 7% vacancy. Uh, And actually this quarter, um, yeah, I guess Q3 actually. Q3, it'll close an $8 billion transaction with a new owner to keep operating it. Um, that, but that's not the point. That's cool, but that's not the point. The point is it was built on the three core pillars of wh- what I thought, anyways, were the three core pillars um, of the future modern American city, which is um, 
You need a space for makers. So we brought in Tech Shop in a maker space. It's about a quarter million square feet. Uh, sorry, a 25,000 square feet maker space. Um, we brought in a co-working space. We brought in WeWork uh, and We Live there as well. So that was sort of the second pillar. And the third was we um, raised a venture fund for it, a $50 million venture fund designed to invest in high growth or potentially high growth companies that were willing to relocate there. Now, you can just imagine from a real estate standpoint, these things are not going to take up the majority of the leases. You can't, I mean, I can't just like be leasing to the companies we invest in or whatever. Um, but it turned out everybody else wanted to be around innovators and entrepreneurs, right? So uh, we had a lot of nonprofits move their headquarters there. Boeing and Lockheed moved their R&D divisions there, or at least parts of them anyway. And so it, it worked. And so Crystal Cities worked. Um, and so about 18 months ago, I thought, well, how do we... Like, you know, now just to put it into perspective, I've been flying everywhere. I mean, Dana and I have screenshots of, of like, her flying one way and me flying another way, and it's like a picture of the, you know, the, the tracking maps or whatever, right? So we'd, like, do laundry on Sundays. And so we've been doing that for a couple of years. Then we do this, and then we're like, man, we can't just, like, do Crystal City everywhere, and it'd be nice if we, like, spent some time together. So I did the most American thing I could do, which was, like, buy a truck and then buy an Airstream. Um, and so we just decided to go everywhere. Um, so we just started driving everywhere. So we left Washington, D.C. last March, um, and we've driven about 40,000 miles. We, we try to live in one new city every week, every week. So we're, we're at like something like 62 cities now in 65 or 66 weeks. Um, and it's, uh, it's been fun. But what I want to quickly do is talk about how startups have changed and then really get to the point about how that's going to impact our cities moving forward. Um, First things first, it's cheaper than ever to start. I think um, it's, it's 50K, 50K today is the equivalent of $5 million 20 years ago. I think you've probably heard that already, but I'll just say that again. I think 50K or even 5,000 bucks today is the equivalent of $5 million 20 years ago. And that's just because it's cheaper than ever. You have uh, credit card readers, you can get at Starbucks, you can do everything in the cloud. Um, and so now really the barrier to entrepreneurship is not money, but rather skills. Um, one little point I'm just going to make here because I'm running really short on time is I've dr driven everywhere, we've invested everywhere, and everybody seems to think that it's a lack of capital that keeps everywhere else from rising, and I think that's a load of shit. What I've learned in the last seven years is that it's professional, um, it's, it's professional skills and functional expertise that are lacking. So the, the, the techniques and the, the tools that people use to raise money, for example, in New York and San Francisco are not you know, commonly taught or learned or whatever in Taos, New Mexico, or Butte, Montana, or Lima, Peru. Um, so it's, it's actually like a lack of skills, and I think there's ways to fix that. So it's cheaper than ever. The second big thing is, is that, you know, the web is getting bigger. It's everywhere. I mean, like, the thing is, though, is that um, America's already hit peak smartphone, but it's everywhere else. It's kind of rising. I know this is probably a little hard to see, but what this is showing you is the telephone took 75 years to get to 100 million households. And then for better or for worse, like Candy Crush took like a year. <laughs> Pokemon Go took like a month. But the reason for that is the infrastructure is there. The infrastructure is there, um, which means that traction is now the new intellectual property. And by traction, by the way, what I, what I mean is growth, growth, any sort of growth. Small but measurable growth is really what traction is. Um, money's everywhere. Um, so anyway, what's happening now, and the reason why we're traveling is, is, is that companies are starting everywhere else, and most importantly, staying everywhere else. There's a story that I always tell, and I'll tell it later on, but just as a bit. First time I ever came to Lincoln was in 2010, and I couldn't find anybody. Like, I didn't know where to go. I didn't know Brian. I didn't know anybody. And then two years later, I run into him in an event in Dallas, and he's like, well, why don't you come to our demo day? And I thought, sure, okay, I'll go up there. And it turns out it's like 600 people at the theater downtown. And then here we are, like seven years later, and we're having conferences like this. And there's companies that have raised 70, 80, and 100 million dollars here in town. So it just goes to show you how fast things have grown. That wraps up another episode of Inside Outside Innovation. Thanks for joining us. If you have comments, questions, or would like us to cover a specific topic, let us know at the IO Podcast on Twitter or at our website, next.co. That's nxxt.co. Until next time, go out and innovate.